Welcome to Practice Diary, and this week I'm thinking about chord extensions. Now I've done a few videos about chords on the bass in the past, and I've heard a few people suggest to me that playing chord extensions, I'm thinking ninths, elevenths, thirteenths, things like that, I've heard a few people suggest that that's difficult. Um, and I don't think it's that difficult. I mean, chord extensions are just notes after all. They're not any different to any other notes. So I'm going to share with you what I think is quite a kind of, uh, you know, not too difficult system for starting to use some chord extensions. Now, if we're going to look at these chord extensions, we need to start off by playing seventh chords. So we're going to arrange three notes, root, third, seventh, because those are the important defining notes in a, a seventh chord. So we're going to look at three different ways of doing it. So we're going to look at major seventh chords. So we're going to have a, a major third and a major seventh. Uh, I'm using A as an example as my root note. Uh, so I'll do everything with a root note on A, just as an example. But the voicings are sat the same no matter what your, your root note is. So that's an A major seven with a major third and a major seventh. Then we could have a minor seven, which has a minor third and a minor seventh. And then the other one I'm going to look at is a dominant seventh, which is a major third and a minor seventh. Okay. So if we keep our root note at the bottom of the chord, then there's only really two different ways you can arrange those three notes. You can either go root on the bottom, then third, then seventh, or you can go root on the bottom, then seventh, then third. Uh, so let's have a look at the first way. So I'm putting my root note on the, on the fourth string. So in this case, that's A. Um, I'll start off with a major seven chord. So my third is gonna go on the third string, that's C sharp. And then the major seventh is gonna go on the second string, that is, uh, that's a G sharp. So that leaves my first string free for me to add a chord extension. And the first chord extension I'm going to look at is a ninth, okay? Because it fits quite nicely onto that first string. So a ninth of A would be B, B natural. So there's a B natural right here on the 16th fret of the first string. And so if I add that to my seventh chord, that gives me an A major nine chord, A major nine. Okay, so I could add that same ninth note to both of the other two types of seventh chords. So if I was thinking in terms of a minor seventh chord, I could add that B on the top, and it gives me a minor ninth chord. And the dominant chord, that gives me an A9. So that's just simply a dominant seventh, so root third seventh, and then ninth B on top. So it's root major third minor seventh, gives me what's called an A9 or a dominant ninth. There's a couple of alterations I can make to that as well on the dominant chord. So when you're playing a dominant seventh chord, you can either sharpen or flatten the ninth. So you can play with a sharp nine. So that would be a C, C natural on top. So that would give you a, what's called an A sharp nine. And then you can also flatten the ninth. So you can make it a B flat. And you've got the, uh, you've got the same thing there with the flat nine chord. So let's have a look at the other way that we could arrange our seventh chords. So this would be putting the, the third on the top. So going root at the bottom, then seventh, then third. So sticking with my root note A, I would then put the seventh on the second string, exactly as I did before. But now my third is going all the way up on the first string. So this is again an A major seven chord, just a different voicing. So now my third string is free. So I can add some a chord extension or some kind of alteration onto my third string. Um, so an obvious one here would be a sharp 11. And that gives me an A major 7 with a sharp 11. Okay. Um, so on the minor 7 chord, so now again I'm going root 7 third, I can add a, a natural 11. And that gives me an A minor 11 chord. And I could also add a sharp 11 onto the dominant chord. So the dominant chord played in this way with the root, then the 7th and the 3rd. I can add the same sharp 11, and that gives me a dominant 7th with a sharp 11, or you can think of it as a flat 5. Flat 5 also works on the, uh, the minor 7 chord, so there you have a minor 7 with a flat 5. So flat 5 and sharp 11, they're really the same note. So that's a few different voicings that you can use, a few different chord extension voicings you can use on a 4 string bass. Now let's have a look at some voicings you can do, use on 5 and 6 string basses. Six string basses really come into their own when you're playing chords, but I should say that all of these voicings are also achievable on five string bass. So if you don't have a six string bass, but you do have a five string, hopefully you can use some of these as well. 
And the concept on, on the six string bass is not really any different to the concept on the four string bass, but I have the possibility of, of putting in wider intervals, bigger gaps between the notes, which sometimes makes the harmony a bit clearer and you know has a really interesting sound to it. So for example, I'm still using the root note A, exactly the same root note I was using before. Um, this would be another voicing of a, a major seven with a sharp 11. So now my 11 is all the way up here on the C string. Um, and uh, yeah, you can do the same thing with the, the minor seven and the natural 11. So nice wide voicings, which make it sound really cool. Um, also, now I'm not using my A string to play the 11th. I can use that as, as my root note. So um, I've got, again, the major seven with the sharp 11. Minor seven with a natural eleven. Okay. Um, so what else can I do? I could put in a thirteenth. We haven't done thirteenths yet. So if I had, say, an A dominant seventh chord, I could put maybe a thirteen on the top. Uh, I could put a flat thirteen on the top. Okay. Um, maybe even I could do a nine and a thirteen. So. That one is a little bit difficult to play, I'm not going to lie to you. Lots of different things that you can do, but that's the basic approach. You start off with those those seventh chords, just using the three notes, the root, the third, and the seventh, and then you can add the um, you can add the extensions on the other strings, the ones that you're not using. Hope that was helpful.